Stanford University. Ladies and gentlemen, especially <coughs> all of you students, you hold this planet's uh, future in your hands, and I'm pretty sure it's a great future because we have to change quite some things about food. So the way that we feed the world today is like shown on this picture. There are quite some things happening. We are uh, increasing from seven to nine billion people, and water coming decades will be more important than f fossil fuel is today. And we are using land for agriculture coming decades that is not really suitable for agriculture. So we need more and more pesticides to control it. And one other thing is that 35% of all trucks on our roads are busy transporting food and food components. So we think we should do this smarter. Now I lose another minute. I think we should do this smarter as well. Okay. So there are quite some misconceptions about food. And one of the misconceptions is that plants like nature. Well, plants don't like nature at all. This is how we think that plants like nature. But if plants really would rule the world, it would look like this. This is plant paradise. This is a mixture. So this is a combination of red and blue light and sophisticated climate control. And the unit that you're about to see here, the second misconception is that I said before, we are moving from seven to nine billion people. But in fact, we are not just having to increase city capacity for two billion people. We have to increase city capacity for 4.5 billion people. So within the next 30, 40 years, we need extra city capacity for a lot of people. And that means that apart from that current cities will be expanding, we will need worldwide 10,000 new cities. And that's a huge opportunity to make these cities much smarter than we have them today. So we think, we talk about smart cities very often. And one of the things that we think is that smart city grids are based on water, energy, and transportation. But if you look back in history, you know that cities always have been shaped by the way we have fed the cities. So that will be the same in future. So our future cities should be based on how we produce food inside the city, which is possible with our technology, and then we connect the grids of water, transportation, and energy to the food grid. So what we are used to over the last 50 years is that we produce our food where nature is kind to it, and then we start transporting our food to wherever we live. So we have a really long supply chain. And from the farmer on one end to the retail shop on the other hand, we lose about 50% of our produce. We are just adding costs and we are losing quality. And I think this is a really, it's a, it's a huge system, but it's a huge monster that we created. And it's about time that we get rid of this 50% loss of produce. So what we are looking for is produce your food right in the cities locally and change food miles into food steps. And people want to be in the cities because Cities are the beginning of the end of hunger, of poverty. So we all want to be there with schools and hospitals. So we have to feed the people right where they live. We are able to grow um, plants in controlled environments and we can grow any crop technically. So we have been growing tomatoes, we have been growing cucumbers, we have been growing stra strawberries and we can grow any crop you want. And this is the nursery of the nearby future. It's a huge warehouse. And in the purple part of this nursery, we call it plant paradise. There is a multi-layer, it could be even a multi-story building, where we grow plants under ideal circumstances, giving them only red and blue light, a little far red, and sophisticated climate control. And just to show you how strong this concept is, if we were to produce 200 grams of fresh vegetables and fruits for one person every day of the year, it only takes one square meter, 10 square feet to do so. So if we would feed 
a small city of 100,000 citizens, we could do that on two soccer fields in 10 layers. And that's really the most compact way of producing food that has ever been invented. So in our nearby future city model, we have to produce smartly. We have to grow faster to be closer to a market. We have much higher yields in our system. We are up to three, four, five times the best Dutch greenhouses, and they are producing pretty well. We have total control of when to yield. We have total control on quality, on taste, on nutrient levels. And we save 90% on the water use compared to traditional agriculture. This could be used anytime, any place. And the most exceptional thing that happened to us is in this system that we call plant paradise, we never have any pests or diseases. So we use no pesticides at all. So this can be used anytime, any place. Second thing is we have to place these things right where we live, in the cities. So we change these foot miles into footsteps and we go back due to high technology 50 years in time where we were used to harvesting our tomatoes in the morning and consume them in the afternoon. So we will be able to make supply and demand really match and that uh, takes away all waste that we have in the supply chain of today. And this plant production unit, as we call our nursery, could be very small, medium, large, or huge. And the last thing that we should take care of, of course, is we have to produce smarter food. It has to be more nutritious, tasting better, totally free of pesticides, fresh, and of course, affordable. So we think that food should be grown large, large scale. Well, our unit could be placed in desert but the same unit could be placed on the polar circle, and of course it could be placed right in the center of our cities. But it could also be a smaller unit, for instance growing um, arugula or herbs in a retail store, or growing your herbs and other things right in the restaurant where you consume them freshly when they are put on your table. And even you have some small units in your house within a few years where you have a sort of microwave-like equipment where you grow um, grasses or other small plants that are very nutritious and tasteful. And in the end, you will have to pick your tomatoes from your kitchen drawer. So in a smart city of the future, you get a whole grid of extra large, large, medium and small sized plant production units and we're going to connect the other grids of energy and water and transportation to the smart food grid. So it could look like this. New cities to be built where the food system is there from the early beginning. The sixth misunderstanding is that we think we need better pharmaceuticals, better drugs to control our diseases. But it's not true. We don't need better drugs. We need better food. And I... In <laughs> I invite you to go to uh, this woman's website um, and her TEDx talk where she explains it's a medical doctor who has multiple sclerosis herself. And due to the fact that she has made a perfect salad, it's a bucket a day and that's a lot of course, but due to that salad, she claims that she is able to walk and bike and horseback ride again due to food, not to, to pharmaceuticals. And this bucket of fresh food that she's eating, we could change that into a small portion of salad that contains exactly those ingredients that she was looking for and made this available for a lot of people with MS, with diabetes, with cancer, etc. So we have to improve the way we feed the world. So we don't know how to feed the world exactly. And we have to reinvent our cities based on food. And we have to mix people with design and technology and architects and medical people to make the city of the future. So what we need is an invitation to all of you, especially you students. We are going to build a huge orchestra and everybody is playing its part. Uh, last week we bought a huge factory, 200,000 square feet in the Netherlands. We're going to do this. And we will build up our new research center and also a city lab a lab where 30, 40 students from all around the world will come together, collect data, find out how drugs 
should be replaced by better food and how we can grow them in real time. So this is our new concert hall and we are working together for a much, much better world. And we have to be smarter, but that's not so difficult, I think, if I see you all. Thank you very much. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.